In this video, we're going to research a claim heard on the radio using the SIFT method. SIFT stands for Stop, Investigate the Source, Find Better Coverage, Trace Claims, Quotes and Media to the Original Context, and then Stop Again and Reflect on What You Found. The claim heard on the radio was about the benefits of carbon dioxide and how rising levels of CO2 is greening the planet. This statement didn't quite compute with my working knowledge of CO2. I mean, I know plants need CO2 to grow, but the whole greening the planet idea had me perplexed, so I decided to research the claim. Searching benefits of rising CO2 levels resulted in this article, among others. Before doing anything else, I stopped. I scanned the article briefly for some context and any emotionally charged opinions. I didn't try to read it word for word, and I tried to keep my reactions in check. There is some slight inflammatory language and some claims that may clash with the majority view of CO2, especially here where it says that it's preventing widespread starvation. Here's the author, Bonner R. Cohen, PhD. He sounds like an academic, but it doesn't mention his discipline, which it should. So the next step is to investigate the source by searching cfact.org for other sites that mention them. To do that, Type in the URL of the organization, minus sign, and then the URL again. This will result in finding websites that mention them and ignore pages from cfact.org itself. Here's Wikipedia. They show that CFACT stands for the Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow. The organization takes a skeptical stance on man-made climate change, arguing that rising global temperatures can mainly be attributed to Earth's natural cycling between warm and cold periods, rather than to greenhouse gas emissions. That statement coincides with the CFACT article, that CO2 or greenhouse gases are helping rather than hindering survival. Let's look at the References and External Links section. This is an important section of Wikipedia sites because they may link out to articles from newspapers, journals, and also primary resources, such as number 7, their IRS Form 990. Every tax-exempt nonprofit has to file one of these with the IRS. These documents can give you a look at who the big donors are to the organization. Near the bottom of the 990 is the list of major donors. It looks like the major donor in 2011 is a group called Donors Trust. We can jot that down as a possible piece of research for later. Now that we know what CFAC stands for, let's search for Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow in double quotes to search it as an exact phrase with minus sign site colon cfact.org. Here's a site called Desmog Blog. Okay, it's got an entire page on the background of CFACT, along with embedded footnotes to additional evidence. And this is good. It has this evidence to other sites, which helps to corroborate Desmog Blog's findings. There's a chronological section on their stance on climate change, and you can see more of their funders, including major oil companies. And here's Donors Trust. And here's the rest of their IRS Form 990s through 2017. It looks like an exhaustive review of CFACT. Well, let's look at the smog blog itself. Here we see that they were named a best blog by time. On the other hand, Jim Hogan, the founder, is not a climate scientist, but a PR guy with a law degree. What makes him a credible expert on the environment? After doing a search on Hogan, I found that over the years, he has earned the respect of scientists through his expertise in communication. He has sought, through the smog blog, to communicate the legitimate science behind climate change. In that way, he has built authority. He has built a reputation on being a resourceful and trustworthy communicator on the climate change debate. Back to the article on CFACT. We've confirmed that CFACT is funded by foundations who are pro-oil and anti-climate change. Should I use the article for my research? The article is not written nor funded by a government agency or university. It uses language such as deep thinking elites, which is a bit biased. And the actual link to the white paper is broken. Bonner Cohen has a PhD after his name, and searching for his degree only tells me he got it from the University of Munich. How did he build his respect within the science community? Most of his pieces for CFACT are his opinions, with no embedded links to further evidence, unlike the Desmog blog site. In the next video, we'll continue to investigate this topic by trying to find better coverage. 
on why CO2 is beneficial. Perhaps there is a government study or a university experiment that supports the claim that CO2 is good for us.